hello guys welcome to the dms on in school in today's video we are going to revise biology paper 2 theory the paper which was written on the 7th of november 2023 by the grade 12 internal candidates the paper reads examinations council of zambia examination for school certificate ordinary level if you are new to this channel you are most welcome and on this channel i teach mathematics science biology civic education english re and revise past examination papers just as i'm doing now if what i do on this channel is what you're interested in please consider clicking the red subscribe button below and turn on the bell notification so that when i upload a new video like this one youtube will be able to notify you by the way i'm going to also upload the biology paper 2 prediction for 2024 and also science paper 1 and paper 2 predictions so if you want to get notified when i upload those videos please consider clicking and turning on the bell notification because i'm going to upload them very soon trust me all right so without further ado let's go straight into the revision all right so this is section a short answer questions for the four marks answer all the questions in the spaces provided in the question paper question one says figure one shows changes which take place when a plant cell is placed in a solution of non-concentration from stage 1 up to stage 3 here. Okay, so in this figure 1 here, we have a plant cell that has been placed in a non-concentration and then we see the changes from stage 1, stage 2 to stage 3. So this is a plant cell in stage 1 see how it is looking and then this is it, the same plant cell in stage two see how the structure now is looking and then this is the same plant cell in stage three and also look at how the structure is looking then a says identify the parts of the cells labeled a and b so we need to identify these parts of the cell labeled a and this one labeled e i mean labeled b so here we must understand that this one labeled a is the cytoplasm and then this one labeled b actually is the vacuum then b part one says using the changes shown in figure one explain what could have been the concentration of the solution in which the cell was placed compared to the cell sap okay now using these changes that we have seen here they are saying these changes should give us an idea to explain what could have been the concentration of the solution in which the cell was placed compared to the cell sub so they are saying we compare the concentration in which the cell was placed and then that concentration of the cell sub inside the, the cell so here we must know that the solution appears to be hypertonic meaning more concentrated compared to the cell sub okay so the solution to which the cell was placed appears to be hypertonic more concentrated compared to the cell sap why we are saying this is evident from the progressive shrinkage of the cell contents away from the cell wall which means plasmolysis from stage one to stage three yeah so we see that the cell content shrinks okay why is it shrinking because water is moving away out of the cell into the concentrated solution by the process known as osmosis because of that the cell undergo the process known as plasmolysis all right so let's proceed then part two says what term is given to the process that led to the changes shown in figure one from stage one to stage three so they need us to give the term to the process which led to these changes from stage one to stage three so what term is that when water moves from a region where it is in dilute to a region where there is more concentration so what process is that so that process is actually osmosis then C says what would be the overall effect of this process on the plant so where we are seeing that the plant has undergone plasmolysis because it has lost water to the concentrated solution 
So they are asking us the overall effect of this process on the plant. So you must understand here that the overall effect would be wilting of the plant due to loss of tiger pressure in the cells. Okay, because the plant would be losing water to the solution and therefore it will dry up, it will have no solution, and then and then the tiger pressure will be reduced. And when tiger pressure is reduced, the plant will, will wilt or will become what we call flasty. Okay, to be able to fall down. Okay, so the overall effect would be wilting of the plant due to loss of tiger pressure in the cells. Then this is which of the three stages of the cell in figure one could be classified as the tiger D stage? Which of the three stages of the cell in figure one could be classified as tiger D state? So we need to know in this. In these stages here which one of these stages could be classified as the touch D state so a touch D state is a state in which the content of the cell press against the cell wall so when we look at this the content are not pressing against the cell wall and here so only stage one qualify qualifies to be a touch D uh, stage so here in answering this question which says which of the three stages of the cell in figure one could be classified as a touch d state we are saying stage one shows the touch d state where the cell contents fully press against the cell wall then e says name two other processes which can make substances to move into and out of the cell so the other processes which can make substances to move into or out of the cell are actually one we have diffusion so here you can state or name diffusion now i decided to explain diffusion as the movement of particles from an area of higher concentration to an area of lower concentration now the other process is actually active transport and i explained active transport as the movement of substances against their concentration gradient which requires energy in form of ATP so active transport is another process by which substances move into and out of the cell and active transport is the movement of substances against their concentration gradient which requires energy in form of ATP so let's move to another part of the question which is figure 2 shows processes of the fate of glucose produced during photosynthesis okay so question two figure two shows processes of the fate of glucose produced during photosynthesis the letters c to e represents these processes okay so we have photosynthesis producing uh, glucose then we see that from c here we see the glucose in the plant co is converted to amino acids with addition of nitrates they become proteins and then we see the same glucose becoming sucrose the same glucose being converted into fats and oils the same glucose being converted to starch the same glucose being converted to cellulose and the same glucose being converted to energy and the same glucose being converted to nucleic acids in this age then s is defined the process represented by the letter i define the process represented by the letter i so what process is this where a glucose is converted to energy so what is that process so that we can define it because we cannot define something we don't know so here you must understand that the process i represents the conversion of glucose to energy so this is the cellular c respiration so i is cellular c respiration which is the metabolic process by which cells break down glucose in the presence of oxygen to produce energy in the form of ATP which stands for adenosine triphosphate so yeah so this is what it is so this process i is actually cellulose respiration which is the metabolic process by which cells break down glucose in the presence of oxygen to 
produce energy in the form of ATP, which is adenosine triphosphate. Then B says identify one process in figure 2 which represents part 1 a catabolic process and part 2 anabolic process. Okay, so we need to identify one process in figure 2 which represents a, a catabolic process. So which processes here represents catabolic? Okay, catabolic involves breaking down complex molecules into simpler ones. So when we see here, there's just building that I'm seeing. So this one is the one at least which is breaking. So the one which represents actually uh, catabolic is um, process I, conversion of glucose to energy. Okay, so we are saying process I, which is the conversion of glucose to energy is the catabolic process. Now, what is catabolic? You must guys know that catabolic involves breaking down complex molecules into simpler ones, often releasing energy, all right? Then let's answer for a process that is representing an anabolic process here. So anabolic involves building up simpler uh, molecules into complex molecules. So a lot of these, they represent anabolic, however, I decided just to choose D here where I said that the process D, which is conversion of glucose to sucrose, is an anabolic process. Now, what do we mean? Anabolic involves building complex molecules from simpler ones, often requiring energy. All right. So, guys, if you're enjoying this biology revision, consider giving this video a like and also let me know in the comment section and also please consider sharing this video to your colleagues in whatsapp group or to your whatsapp contact so that they can benefit as you are benefiting right now all right so let's proceed guys to question three or the same question two so this is question two c, c which says if this fate of glucose was in the human body if this fate of glucose was in the human body, uh, part one says identify two processes in figure two which would take place. So we need to identify two processes in figure two which would take place. Okay, so if this fate of glucose was actually in a human body, which two processes would take place? So, human body that do not deal with the starch, cellulose, sucrose, or amino acid, they only deal with the energy and the converting glucose into oil. So, it is actually this one and this one. So, when they say here that um, identify two processes eh, from figure two, which, which would take place eh, in the human body, uh, number one, process I, which is conversions of full glucose to uh, energy which is the cellular respiration and also process E which is conversion of glucose to fats and oils which is lipid synthesis then part 2 C is state the form in which the glucose would be stored okay so glucose in a human body if it is in excess it is stored in which form so here we are saying in the human body glucose is stored in the form of glycogen then d says name two industrial applications of process i okay we saw that process i was the respiration okay so what are some of the industrial application of process i so one of the industrial application of process i is in brewing okay so here we say the cellular says enzymes assist in the Blowing processes. Okay, so the enzymes that are involved in respiration actually can assist in the blowing process. Then another industrial application is laundry. So here we are saying cellular seeds enzymes help remove stains and soften fabrics. Okay, fabrics. Right, yeah. So those enzymes that are produced in in a respiration can help to remove stains and soften what fabrics all right so guys if you're enjoying let me know in the comment section consider giving this video a like if you have not you haven't given it a like that would encourage me to do more of these 
videos. All right, so we go to question three, which says the table shows two blood groups, A, B, and O, and their properties. Okay, so the table shows two blood groups, A, B, and O, and their properties, right? So the table shows two blood groups, A, B, and O, and their properties. So A part one says complete the table by filling in the spaces provided. Okay. So this is the table, blood group A, B, and O. Antigens, we don't know, we need to fill up here. Then antibodies, we don't know, we need to fill up here. Then to whom it is donated to, it is donated to blood group A, B, and to whom does it receive from, from A, B, A, O, and B. Then we have blood group O, then what antigens are there? We have none. What antibodies are there? We need to fill up here. To who is this blood donated to? It is donated to A, B, B, A, B, A, B, then O. To whom does it receive from? From just O. So let's complete. So blood groups have got what we call antibodies and antigens. So like blood group A should contain A antigens and B antibodies and then blood group B should contain B antigens and then A antibodies. Then blood group O doesn't have antigens but it has the antibodies. Right, so I covered this lesson very well in my online tuitions for, for those that are writing biology, the CAGCE, and also biology grade 12 internals, please, I encourage you to join my online tuitions because we are going to benefit a lot, especially for the grade 12 GCE that are writing in the coming month. Please, I'm doing a vigorous revision, topic by topic revision, also through past papers at only 60 quacha at only 60 quacha so if you're interested so that i can prepare you where i've covered these things in very very simple and detailed way you have to whatsapp me on 0977 0977 this is a promotion please can you jump on it so that you are assisted so that you write that biology exam and then pass with it a distinction right so let's start answering right away so blood group a b it should have antigens so this one always has antigens which is a and b then in terms of antibodies it doesn't have antibodies then when we come to blood group O, in terms of antigens, it doesn't have. In terms of antibodies, it has antibody A and antibody B. Then part 2 says, explain what an antigen is. Explain what an antigen is. So guys, you must understand that an antigen is a substance that triggers an immune response in the body through the production of antibodies. Yeah. So usually these antigens, they trigger the production of antibodies in our bodies, okay? So like in terms of the blood groups that we have, the blood that we have is in groups. So inside the groups there, there are what we call antigens and then antibodies. So like in, when blood from a different person is introduced in another person, the blood of that person to which the other blood has gone who sense who scan that blood and see the antigens it has so if the antigens it has are not similar to what it has then it is going to produce antibodies that are going to attack those antigens in that other blood that has been introduced introduced so that way now you can see that there will be what we call agglutination. So in other words, I'm just trying to explain what an antigen is as a substance that triggers an immune, an immune response in the body through the production of antibodies. Then B says, explain why a person with blood group AB can receive blood from any donor. So like we have seen here, the blood group AB this person can receive from blood group AB, from blood group A, from blood group O, from blood group B. 
so we need to explain why is such a situation okay so you see when you see this one this one can receive from any white because it doesn't have antibodies to attack any of these blood when they are introduced because antibodies are the one that attacks when the antigens of these are not compatible then the antibodies will attack now this one doesn't have antibodies so whichever type of blood that is introduced in a b it will receive so the answer I had to put here is that this is because people with a b blood group lucky and bodies against a and b antigens okay then c says determine the effect of blood from a donor with the blood group a b being transfused into a recipient of blood group o so if someone has is donating has a blood group of a b and then donating uh, the blood to one with the blood group o what will be the effect of course when you look at a uh, blood group o blood group o contains uh, antibodies a and b so you find that but it doesn't have antigens here but this one has antigen a b now since these antigens are not in this blood group o so they will be attacked by what antibodies a and b so in answering this one i said the effect of blood transfusion from group a b to blood group o is the agglutination this is because the b and the a and b and bodies in blood group o will attack the a and b antigens in the blood group <laughs> In blood group a b okay so we have said the effect of blood transfusion from a b to blood group o is agglutination which is the clamping together of uh, the antibodies and antigens this is because the a and b antibodies in blood group o will attack the a and b antigens in blood group a b all right so let's move to D which says explain the importance of screening blood for the purpose of transfusion explain the importance of screening blood for the purpose of transfusion so we can say that uh, screening blood is crucial to ensure compatibility between the donor and the recipient preventing potentially fatal transfusion reaction reactions yeah so screening blood for the purpose of transfusion is very important because it does what it ensures the blood between the recipient and the donor is compatible to prevent potential fatal transfusion reactions then another importance of screening blood for the purpose of transfusion is that screening also minimizes trans transmission of diseases such as HIV and AIDS, then syphilis and hepatitis B. Yeah, so you screen the blood to ensure that it does it doesn't have these diseases. Otherwise, if you don't do that, as you transfuse the blood, you can also transmit these diseases. All right. So let's proceed to question four. Question four, figure three. So this one was supposed to be figure four as well. But they made a mistake so the same figure three shows an example of an ecosystem so this is an example of an ecosystem where we have we are told there is a sun here though we can't see it then we have water so this is the water where the fish is we have small fish these ones here then we have carnivorous fish this one here then we have land and then we have plants here okay then a says identify two non-living parts of the ecosystem in figure three so we need to identify non-living parts of the ecosystem in this figure here so the non-living parts that are here are number one sunlight itself it is a non-living part and also water you can also say land then b they're saying 
from the features of the ecosystem in figure three name the type of ecosystem so the type of ecosystem this one we have here could be an aquatic ecosystem which is known as the pond ecosystem so this one can be called the pond ecosystem then let's proceed to the next question which is c says explain the role played by the following in the ecosystem in figure three part one small fish what role is played by those small fish here what role is being played by these small fish in the ecosystem okay then part two carnivorous fish what role is being played by these carnivorous fish in this ecosystem so here are the answers so we must know that small fishes play a role of being consumers in the food chain so here the small fish they are playing a role of being consumers okay so meaning that they are being consumed or they are also playing a role of being prey for larger carnivorous fish or they are food for larger carnivorous fish and they help control populations of smaller organisms they feed on so those fish here they feed on smaller organisms and then they control their population because those organisms without being eaten by small fish they can over populate themselves in that ecosystem and then cause shortage of food yep so the role played by small fish is that they are being consumers in the food chain and also prey for larger carnivorous fish and they also help control populations of smaller organisms then the role being played by carnivorous fish is actually carnivorous fish play or plays the role of being top predators so these are playing as the top predators in the ecosystem controlling populations of smaller fishes okay so they are also controlling the population of smaller fishes and also part of nutrient cycle cycling when they die and decompose for themselves they are also part of the nutrient cycling cycle when they die and decompose so the role being played by carnivorous fish is that they are top predators in the ecosystem and also control populations of smaller fish and also they are part of the nutrient cycle okay then in d season how does the sunlight in figure three affect the distribution of plants in the ecosystem how does the sunlight in figure three affect the distribution of plants in the ecosystem so how does sunlight affect the dis the, the, distri the distribution of plants in the ecosystem so we are saying that um, sunlight is essential for photosynthesis which is how plants pro produce food in the pond ecosystem plants will grow more densely in areas where a sunlight or where sunlight is abundant the availability of sunlight affects the distribution of food plants as they will be found primarily in the well lit areas near the surface of the water or in shallow regions where light can penetrate all right so let's move to question number five which is the last question from section a and guys i am encouraging those writing grade 12 gce in the coming month and those writing a grade 12 biology that take an opportunity to join the online revision because you see question five if you go through past papers is on genetics Question five is on genetics. So the more you revise, the more you know how to answer questions on genetics. So in other words, a question, question five is already a free mark because you already know the question which is going to be there. It is going to come from genetics. So when you revise more past paper questions with me, you will be able to know which questions will be coming here. And when it comes, you will be able to answer it because i'm telling you this because i have experience and i encourage you sikisti kwacha only for the knowledge that you are going to acquire that will make you to pass and move forward with 
your life if you stint yourself a 60 kwacha i don't know then what you want otherwise this is for you we have to help each other like that so question 5a says define the following terms used in genetics define the following terms used in genetics part 1 recessive allele then part 2 phenotype okay so here you must understand that recessive allele a recessive allele is one that is overshadowed in the phenotype by the presence of a dominant allele. Yeah, so a recessive allele is one that is overshadowed in the phenotype by the presence of a dominant allele or the one that does not express its physical characteristics in what in the phenotype of an organism that is what we call a recessive allele so a recessive allele is one that is overshadowed in the phenotype by the presence of a dominant allele then we come to phenotype we are saying this is the outward expression of the genotype in the form of physical characteristics of an organism yeah so phenotype is just an outward expression of what of the phenotype in the form of physical characteristics of an organism then b says jane has blood group o and has a child of blood group b jane has blood group o and has a child of blood group b she accuses john of blood group a b to be the father of her child jane has blood group o and has a child of blood group b she accuses john of blood group a b to be the father of her child with the help of a genetic diagram determine the possible offspring to conclude whether or not john could be the father okay so we are going to see if Jane has this blood group and then the child has this blood group and then the suspect John has this blood group AB. We need now to construct a genetic diagram to determine the possible offspring of these two if they are to mate. Okay, so let's just squeeze this one. Okay, so to do so as usual, we do this. We need to put the parent phenotype i started with the mother the mother's phenotype is she has a blood group o and against the father who has blood group a b the next we need to indicate their parental genotype their genetic makeup if you have blood group o what alleles do you have then the mother has these alleles then the father if you have blood group a b what alleles do you have you have these alleles like that so this is what we call codominance uh, this kind of alleles where blood group a b is being determined by two alleles themselves they are dominant so the allele for a and the allele for b is dominant and because of that they are expressing themselves into the phenotype so that kind is what we call codominance so now so after we know that these are the genotype we need to look at it the gametes so the gametes are the sex cells so uh, one of the gametes for the mother can have this and the other one can have this and then for the father another one can have this another one can have that then let's look at the offspring genotypes when this crosses like this one can cross with that one like that and also it can cross with that one like that so it is done this one then can cross with this one like that and it can also cross with that one like that then we can put the phenol uh, the combination this this and that the combination will be that then this and that the combination will be that then this and that the combination will be that then this and that the combination will be that okay then we need now to put the offspring uh, phenotype so offspring phenotype so here 
if the offspring has got uh, this uh, genetic makeup, what will be the phenotype? So the, the phenotype is blood group A. Why? Because uh, the allele here, the allele for blood group A are dominant on allele for blood group O. So because of this, since it is dominant over that O, it will cause this one to be blood group A. This one will be blood group B because the allele for blood group B are dominant over the allele for blood group O. Then this one will also be blood group A and this one will be blood group B like that. Okay. Then this is very important where I say it. Since the alleles for blood groups A and B are dominant, are dominant to that for a group O, a group A person could have the genotype of that or that. Yeah. So for a person to have blood group A, they can have this genotype here like this one led to this. Or they can have these alleles. Similarly, a group B person could have the allele like these ones. You have seen this one, they are giving us B, this one, this one. Or they can have this. Now we are saying there are no alternative genotypes for blood for group C, A, B and D, O. So, like here, you can have this and this. These are alternative, which can give what? Blood group A. Then blood group B, you have either this one and this one. But for blood group A, B and O, you don't have alternatives. If someone has blood group uh, O, it means they only have this kind of genetic makeup. If someone has a blood group A, B, it means they have this kind of genetic makeup or alleles so it's very important that this point i had to put it here so that it helps you to understand so in answering this question this is how you answer you have seen that eh? she accused john that that is the one who made her pregnant to have the child of blood group b so using that just johnny's blood with her blood we can see that it is possible that they can have children with blood group B. So we can conclude that John is the father of the child they are using these uh, genetic diagrams. All right. So let's move to question or section B. Essay questions 30 marks. So here 30 marks and you write questions in essay form. So here they have guided to say answer any three questions from this section all answers must be in complete sentences and in paragraphs so here don't write in point form but write in complete sentences and the paragraphs okay so here is question one which says a explain the role of the kidney in the following excretion to osmoregulation then b explain one disorder associated with the kidney and its remedy Remedies then C give two reasons why there is limited excretion of substances in plants. Then two A says explain the effective ways of communicating sexual limits among adolescents. Then B discuss the causes of infertility in human beings. Then C explain ways of managing sexual pressure, uh, pressure with a partner. Then three says three A says relate the life cycle of a mosquito. To methods of malaria control at each stage then b explain the causative agents and symptoms of each of the following diseases part one biohazia part two cholera then four a says describe the structure of the human ear and explain the functions of the major parts of the ear then b explain the causes and methods of preventing deafness then five a says identify the parts of the synovial joint and explain their functions then B says using relevant examples, compare and compare the ball and socket and hinge joints. All right, so let's start answering these questions. Okay, so question one A says explain the role of the kidney in the following excretion. So we are going to explain the role of the kidney in excretion by writing as follows. So here we said the kidney plays a crucial role in the excretion of metabolic products. 
blood enters the kidney through the renal artery and passes through the glomerulus where filtration occurs. Waste products such as urea, cre creatine, cre creatinine, okay, this one should be creatinine and excess salts are filtered out of the blood and into the renal tubules. These substances are eventually excreted from the body as urine, which is transported from the kidneys to the bladder via the ureters. Then we also explain the role of the kidney in part 2 osmoregression. So the role of the kidney in osmoregression can be said as follows. So we are saying the kidney helps maintain the body waters or the body's water and the electrolyte balance through osmoregulation. It regulates the concentration of bodily fluids by adjusting the amount of water and the electrolytes reabsorbed in the renal tubules. When the body is dehydrated, the kidney reabsorbs more water back into the bloodstream, resulting in concentrated urine. Conversely, when the body has excess water, the kidney excretes more water, producing dilute urine. This process is influenced by hormones such as the antidiuretic hormone ADH and the aldosterone. All right. So this is how you are supposed to answer. Let's go to part B of question one. Explain one disorder associated with the kidney and its remedies. Okay, so we can explain one disorder associated with the kidney and its uh, disorders as follows. So we are saying one common disorder associated with the kidney is the kidney stones. These are hard deposits of minerals of minerals and salts that form inside the kidneys. Remedies for kidney stones include increasing water intake to help flush out small stones, medication to dissolve certain types of stones, and in cases of larger stones, a procedure called lithotripsy may be used to break the stones into smaller passable pieces. Okay, so now let's also give two reasons why there is limited excretion of substance in plants. Give two reasons why there is limited excretion of substances in plants. So here we are saying plants have limited excretion of substances for too many reasons. Firstly, plants have efficient nutrient recycling systems within their structures, allowing them to reuse many substances that animals would do. Excrete. Secondly, plants generally have a lower metabolic rate compared to animals, resulting in fewer waste products that need to be eliminated. All right. So let's move to question two. A says, explain the effective ways of communicating sexual limits among adolescents. Okay. So let's now explain the effective ways of communicating sexual limits among adolescents. So here we have to say that. The, Effective ways of communicating sexual limits among adolescents include clear and direct verbal communication, setting boundaries early in relationships, and using I statements to express feelings and needs, and respecting others' limits and decisions. These strategies help create a safe and comfortable environment for discussing sensitive topics and ensure that both parties understand and respect other's boundaries. Then B says, discuss the causes of infertility in human beings. Discuss the causes of infertility in human beings. So, the following are some of the causes of infertility in human beings. So here we say that infertility in human beings can be caused by various factors. These include the hormonal imbalances that affect the ovulation or sperm production, then physical blockages in the fallopian tubes or vas deferens, low sperm count or motility issues, conditions like endometriosis that affect the, the, product, the, the reproductive organs, age-related fertility decline, and certain medical conditions or treatments that impact reproductive function. 
Understanding these causes is crucial for proper diagnosis and treatment of infertility. Then C says explain ways of managing sexual pressure with a partner. Explain ways of managing sexual pressure with a partner. So here you have to say that managing sexual pressure with a partner involves open communication about boundaries and the comfort levels as well as mutual respect for each other's decisions it is important to create an environment where both partners feel comfortable expressing their feelings and limits without fear of judgment or pressure yeah so that's how you manage sexual pressure with the partners so here you do what it you should involve open communication about boundaries and the comfort levels as well as mutual respect for each other's decisions it's also important to create an environment where both partners feel what comfortable expressing their feelings and the limits without fear of judgment or pressure okay then we move to question three which says relate the life cycle of a mosquito to methods of malaria control at each stage question three a says relate the life cycle of a mosquito to methods of malaria control at each stage so here is what we uh, we have to answer so here we say the life cycle of a mosquito can be related to malaria control methods at each stage for eggs removing standing water sources eliminates bleeding grounds during the larval stage using larval sites in water bodies can be effective for pupae introducing predatory fish in water bodies can help control populations finally for adult mosquitoes using insect insecticide treated bait nets and indoor residual spraying can reduce transmission of malaria parasite then this is explain causative agents and symptoms of each of the following diseases explain the causative agents and the symptoms of each of the following diseases bioasia so here we are saying that bioasia is caused by sicho i don't know how to spell this one but it should be maybe cystosoma parasitic worms and its symptoms include abdominal pain diarrhea and blood in urine or stool then cholera we are saying cholera on the other hand is caused by vibrio chorella okay vibrio chorella bacteria and is characterized by severe watery diarrhea vomiting and rapid dehydration All right then we move to question 4a which says describe the structure of the human ear and explain the functions of the major parts of the ear so question 4a says describe the structure of the human ear and explain the functions of the major parts of the ear again i explained very well in my online tuitions on the part of the ear here so here you have to answer as follows so you have to say that the human ear is a complex structure consisting of three many parts the outer the middle and the inner ear the outer ear com the outer ear comprising the pinna and ear canal collects and channels sound waves the middle ear including the eardrum and the oscos amplifies and transmits sound vibrations then the inner ear containing the cochlea converts sound vibration into nerve impulses that the brain can interpret additionally the semicircular canals in the inner ear play a crucial role in maintaining balance then b says explain the causes and methods of preventing deafness b explain the causes and methods of preventing deafness so here we are saying deafness can be caused by various factors including prolonged exposure to loud noises ear infections aging and genetic factors prevention methods include using earring protection in noise environments avoiding prolonged exposure to loud sounds treating ear infections promptly and regular hearing checkups 
especially for those at higher higher risk then we move to question 5a says identify the parts of the synovial joint and explain their functions identify the parts of the synovial joint and explain their functions okay so here is how we are supposed to answer this one so we are saying a synovial joint consists of several important parts each with the specific functions the the articular cartridge covers the ends of the bones reducing friction during movement sign of your fluid lubricates the joint and nourishes the cartridge then ligaments connect the bones and provide stability to the joint the joint capsule encloses the entire joint and produces synovial fluid then together these components allow for smooth pain free movement of the joint then b using relevant examples compare the bow and the socket and hinge joints so using relevant examples compare the bow and socket and hinge joints so this is how we answer this one so here we say bow and socket joints such as the hip allow for rotation and movement in multiple planes providing a wide range of motion in contrast hinge joints like the elbow allow movement in one plane only similar to a door hinge while both types are synovial joints their different structures result in different ranges of motion suited to their specific functions in the body all right all right so guys we have come to this wonderful biology revision i hope this revision has helped you to understand how to answer biology questions and some of the concepts that you need to know before you go in an exam and once again i repeat guys you have to join the online revisions for biology so that you are assisted fully you go out there to write with the knowledge expecting what questions are supposed to come on you which questions so that you know how to answer those questions all right so if you're interested you can whatsapp me on 0977 9241750977924175 guys thank you for watching for now bye and see you in the next video peace